Hello, this is First Fire and Non-Assault Move. Welcome back to the 55th episode in the War in the East series. Let's get caught up with the situation report. It is now the first week of August. We have advanced two turns. We did turn 110 and 111 off camera. Most of the action was pocket cleanup and getting our forces back to the front for continuing offensive operations. Let's start with Army Group North. No change along the front from the Le Leningrad sector all the way down to the Moscow sector. What we did do over the course of those two turns was a lot of administrative actions. You look here, we're down to 303 admin points. A large part of that was reassignment of our core headquarters to army headquarters. Now there is a nice contiguous uh, row of our core's core headquarters along with the attached divisions associated with the appropriate army headquarters. Now the headquarters are all lined up, same color, down here as well. We are getting a little low on admin points, so it's not complete. We are going to do a core headquarter, army headquarter realignment. We'll continue with that, but right now it's looking pretty good. As far as activity along the Leningrad sector all the way down to Moscow sector, really there was nothing to report. No attacks, no Soviet attacks. The two turns that were off camera, the Soviets followed pattern, no attacks, very limited attacks, a lot of bombing runs and minimal movement because we were not, we, there wasn't much activity along the front for the Soviets to react to that. So it was kind of a, a static uh, two turns that we executed off camera. Let's go down to the Moscow sector. No change here as well. Nothing to speak of as far as Soviets challenging the bridgehead over the Volga here. And the same can be said along the Moscow sector. Let's start talking about pocket cleanup. It looks so much nicer now, and wow, 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 isn't, isn't this such a difference after a handful of turns where we are all lined up on the west bank of the Don with a host of Soviets uh, defending Verozna. Now it is all cleaned up, and our forward line of troops is fairly advanced eastward, at least from the south of Moscow. Then we have that ridiculous bend all the way up to Leningrad, which we have to address at one point. Let's talk losses real quick, because that's pretty important. We're not going to show it here, obviously, because of um, the past two turns. We don't reflect any of the losses from the past two turns on this screen, but we can look at the totals. The Soviets are now almost at 13 million tanks, Getting there, getting there to 50,000, and that's one of our goals to achieve. Let's look at destroyed units. This is a even more gruesome tally that we have inflicted upon the Soviets since our spring-summer 1943 offensive has started. If we go back to turn 106, that is six weeks back, that puts us through July into June. Well, actually, we did some offensive operations in May. We could go back here. What? That's another, what, another maybe 10. We'll do that. Okay, we'll say back to 105. Turn 105 puts us kind of late May, where we did have some offensive ops, and we did destroy Soviets, as you can see here. Doing the count off camera, not including support elements that are not re represented on the battlefield, with counters, we've destroyed, it was 118, we're gonna add another 10, 128 Soviet formations, a mixture of division and core level formations, 118. And that is really from May into July. The first week of August, we haven't conducted any attacks. This first week of August, we've done several moves where we're at the point we're going to start attacking, I just wanted to capture where we are with the first week of August before we do any more attacks and get an update, get caught up where we are. This is even more gruesome, 
more gruesome tally than really uh, we were up at 130 <clears throat> excuse me 130 140 formations destroyed during 1942 to include the winter offensive right up until January we started to count I believe this is quite remarkable for the Germans to achieve that 128 Soviet formations off out of the order of battle Germans will not face them any longer what we're looking at now is the Germans back to the front getting back into attack positions ready for the next stages of the spring winter spring summer now summer really offensive it's August now and let's look at the order of battle I forgot to do that the Soviets have dipped down down low almost mid five millions in manpower an indicator of the damage and the losses we have inflicted upon the Soviets since 1942 the colossal losses inflicted upon them and the Germans continue to climb four million we're up into 300,000 range maybe get into the four million four hundred thousand range next holding strong 10,000 tanks Soviets are still churning out they st Soviets still have at their disposal a wide range of factory locations that are far far east in the heart of the Soviet motherland out of reach of German forces and they're churning out the, the tanks but as soon as those tanks get to the front we are destroying them and they still dwarf us fairly significantly significantly in aircraft this is the most telling right here down to five million and if we count access minor allies that's right around the range of a million that puts us up at five million three hundred thousand we are almost equal in manpower with the Soviet Union that is very symbolic of what the front is looking like that's a segue to the next stages we want to encircle this portion of the Soviet front starting from here this will be one of the axes of advance break out and link up with this southern axis of advance right around in this region just to destroy the Soviets here to further weaken the southern approaches to Moscow later we may look at how we're going to destroy the Soviets within this sector and the next obvious location for us was to straighten out the front and make it a straight shot from Rostov all the way up to Tambov Tambov here and then we want Ryzan to that will also encircling these Soviets will also make a more a straighter line a straighter angled line up to Ryzan and get uh, make us be able to uh, assemble forces to an even greater extent than we are now the more we shorten these lines and this is a salient that's developed the Soviets are pretty tough down here it was hard going we may wait one extra turn to conduct this encirclement however these forces have barely I don't think they've attacked yet here no they have not we did some preliminary attacks just to start getting more of our forces over this bridgehead we may go through with it and at least reach with the southern axis of advance here up to the river that is the Durkle get over the Durkle River and link up South Bank North Bank we have easier going coming from the north and we have enough combat power in mechanized formations to achieve a link up let's just get this done it's the first week of August summer is summer is on we're on the back half of summer we have to be mindful of that let's, let's get as much done as possible and here we may once link up is achieved we may have a one-armed pincer and try to encircle this grouping here to even straighten the front out further and that catches us up to the current situation report on the front what are the next steps for the Germans after we do these next attempted encirclements of the Soviet forces we want to continue to destroy the Soviet field army we find our in the process of doing so we find ourselves further and further east at least south of Moscow 
And there are some cities that I haven't even really considered in the realm of possibility that are eastward. And the more and more Soviets we destroy south of Moscow, the less and less there are of them, and the more east we can go. There's really a drop-off as far as strategic objectives. When we get down into Stalingrad, there is nothing. A gulf of a steppe, just all steppe land and open area just to consume German time and resources to, to reach some objective like Stalingrad, if we were to go that east in Saratov and Penza and Saransk, cities that I really have never heard mentioned ever in all the history books, World War II, Eastern Front history books I've read, are Zamas, Maram, <laughs> Vladimir. Nice. Where, how far more east do we go? I don't know. Destroying the Soviet forces kind of is... The, the second order effect is we're going further east. And we find that... Apologies, little interruption. On the note of going further east to secure some of these strategic objectives, these cities, greater and larger cities, let's look at our victory points, which have not really climbed very much after... We, we did seize Verones and Litepsk. We're da up to 218. Marching into the mid-200s is where we're probably going to end up at the war's conclusion. We really don't have the time now left. You know, we're going to be into 1944. <laughs> it's pretty late in the war before you know it. And that means we would have to occupy so much of the map to get that auto victory. I really wish somehow factored into victory point collection was the destruction of the opponent's field army, which goes a long way towards winning a war, not just holding a city. Anyways, that is how it's going to play out more than likely. We'd love just for bragging rights to take Moscow I think the more we destroy the Soviet field army, it's going to be more and more achievable. That's going to require a heavy lift to bring a very sizable attacking force to the north here. This is still an idea to attack here. That will provide the dreaded encirclement. The the operation that the Soviets fear the most, the encirclement. <laughs> that means we have to get it over the Oka, we have to have a bridgehead over the Oka, and I think once we get Ryzan, we'll be established here, hopefully by the end of August, and remember we can attack well, very well, during blizzard and snow conditions, so offensive ops are not going to halt unless there's mud. And the Soviets have defense in depth, to an extent, really it's in and around Moscow here to the flanks. It's a little lighter. That could be an option. What's left for the German army south of Moscow? Really, where do we want to go? I don't think we want to go much further east. And once we clear out this force, we only have a thin line of Soviets here to really destroy. What gain would there be in that? We could again make an even another encirclement almost mirror image of what we did with Ver with Verones uh, across against all these Soviets here across this breadth of the front and that could be an option ideally we just want to straighten out the front so that's a straight line all the way up to Tambov and that means destroying the Soviets here which would be another logistical move to have the combat power to destroy the Soviets here in an encirclement type maneuver. And that is about it to discuss for now. For now, uh, looking pretty good. Chasing off partisans, getting reinforcements. Oh, uh, one little note. The second SS Panzer Corps has been withdrawn. I Going through all the reassignments of core headquarters and division 
to uh, Corps Headquarters and then the Corps Headquarters to Army, I was like, why are all these Panzer divisions assigned to Army Group Center now? And I'm like, oh, okay. We found, we remember that happened when the 14th Panzer Corps Headquarters was withdrawn and 2nd SS was withdrawn. So we did a whole bunch of shuffling, a trickle-down effect to make sure everyone is in command and control. And each headquarters, core headquarters, is not too taxed with too many divisions under its command and control. All right, we are going to complete the moves. Not many left. We're going to conduct the attacks, and we'll come back with a situation report on what that looks like. Hopefully, we'll have the Soviets encircled here, and the Soviets encircled here more pocket destruction in the future that is the plan and the hope and i will be back all right i'm back moves and attacks complete no change around the leningrad sector we go all the way down to Ryzev where we did some preliminary shipping ops we reinforced this bridgehead over the volga we did some economy of force pulling some of our forces just rearranging them so that they're arrayed a little better so that now there's no way the soviets will dislodge our bridgehead hero the Volga for future operations likewise we made some attacks against some uh, light, more lightly defended area in and around Moscow to get a foothold here again we will potentially build up forces to take Kalinin and have a menacing com combination of Panzer Corps and Infantry Corps an attacking group to the north of Moscow to potentially be a northern arm of a pincer movement. Along the Moscow frontage, no change. In preparation for a build-up, we pulled out the 56 Panzer Corps. We added two Panzer Divi oh, a Panzer Division and Motorized Division to the single Panzer Division 56 already had, and it already had two Infantry Divisions, so they're now sitting on Axis Rail ready to be moved and likewise we have the seventh corps pulled out of the line they're sitting on rails and they could be moved up to start forming a cadre for a grouping to the north of moscow let's talk about the plan to have an encirclement around these soviet forces it was successful this was the easier encirclement by far and actually, the Verona's encirclement was easier than both of these. <laughs> Soviets defended very well. We can look at some of the attacks that were made all through here, pushing the Soviets back, 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 and then breaking out. It was fair, relatively easy to break out through here. We only had an unimpeded route for our Panzer Divisions and our Motorized Divisions and our Panzer Grenadier Divisions. A nice route all the way up to link up, and we have an encirclement of Soviet forces. There's about 20 in here, 20 plus. And if we look further south, the encirclement, uh, what do we call it? The Bogachar pocket. Well, this was extremely arduous for the southern axis of advance. The Soviets defended like gangbusters. And we didn't, we don't have the same combat power for this southern encirclement as we did for the north because the grouping we had at the very south that was one of the axes of advance when we had kind of geometrically had the north center and south well the south we broke up so the half of the panzer corps went here two and then there's two up here and likewise we had some infantry corps that we we assembled down here the combat power was not as great to break through here and the Soviets were fairly well dug in we did manage to encircle about another 20 or so Soviet formations all in all I think there's about 45 total formations represented on the map not including a headquarters that's in there either to the north or south so this is two successful encirclements were a little thin here no threats from the east again Soviets are not defending in depth very much south of moscow this is still a fairly dense soviet concentration at this point in the war the first week of august so that's pretty good we have a now two more encirclements in the first week of august 
to do some more pocket cleanup. Shorten our front here. And, oh yes, let's talk about this as well. We decided to get a bridgehead over the Oka while we could. Knowing that there are no Soviet forces to the north or east of this region, really, it's, it's wafer thin in comparison to other parts of the Soviet front in front of Moscow and Leningrad. Therefore, we got over the Oka. Now we can push along the north bank of the Oka and not have to get a bridgehead when the Soviets are going to recover and build up forces here. That also threatens Ryazan. Very successful encirclement here. We're combining two attack groups, the center and the north. It's a little overkill. That's why we pulled out some forces. We have to start doing something about Moscow. I'm just feeling that. I'm feeling that itch. What is left to accomplish in the south, we ask? Well, after this pocket's cleaned up, there will be some strong Soviet forces here. There's really no way to get a good encirclement potential of these forces unless we move down at least two or three pans of core here and we have one or two here and then we'll just encircle a small chunk just to straighten the front and this is like throw these are like throwaway divisions for the soviets although the amount of the formations we destroyed it's mounting it really is mounting up for the soviets oh and gosh let me fig i forgot last before we went on to moves and attacks, and I stepped away. Let's get info screens, show losses. Although we cannot go back, we look at the Soviet losses for the turn. The Between three turns, you could say three turns of cleanup, one just started to clean up, one turn completely dedicated to cleanup, and the third turn really the, the last vestiges of clean up and getting back to the front there was 336,000 one turn and then 300 in 30s 40s thousand again in addition to the turn before that so all told <clears throat> excuse me all told between those three turns of destroying the Soviet formations uh, inside the Verona's pocket and also to the north it amounted to close to a million Soviet casualties and over a thousand Soviet AFEs. That's how these figures spiked here and that's how we drained some of the Soviet order of battle figures here as well. I wanted to mention that. With that in mind, what is left of the Soviet field army to destroy once this pocket in the northern pocket is cleaned up again? We ask, well, there are these Soviet formations here. We could call it the rostov Voroshilovgrad front. And then moving north, then there will just be, from Tambov down to Bokchar, a scattering of Soviet forces just having a contiguous line. If we broke out, to, if we had an axis of advance to the north and the south of this, it would not accomplish very much as far as destroying the Soviet field army. It would just rip open another hole. But these gaping holes in the Soviets' front really doesn't open into anything critical for the Soviets. They can just give ground, plug men in, have us rinse and repeat this process. Granted, they are losing, they are taking grievous losses. There are no objectives really to gain. If we really went all in and tried to take Stalingrad and some of these very far reaching east lying cities it has to be then we shift our focus to the late stages of summer into fall and then winter offensive for 43 44 looking at moscow it has to be that we can continue to have these smaller encirclements and destroy the soviet field army let's try something truly grand why not at this point in the war, the Soviets are not going to, in any way, shape, or form, push back the German forces from where they are. If anything, we'll continue to make gains, uh, 
easily in the south, taking some of these far-reaching cities, but that just creates an extremely lengthy front, and we're only creeping up in victory points. I mean, it's 219 now. What would we get in the 220s, 230s? And then big deal, we have uh, an obscenely ridiculous front where it's from Leningrad straight north, and then it would bow out all the way out here like this. Without us really winning the war, and we're, we're not destroying the Soviet field army, we're not getting enough points to get a decisive victory. So let's look at Moscow again. I'm trying to talk myself into this. Here is a weaker part of their front. And once we... We're threatening Ry Ryazan right now, and the Soviets are going to start to backpedal and try to get a defensive line over the Oka. That's my prediction. We will now be over the Oka, and we can start this further east and north section and region. It's kind of hideous with these ma large swamp here and rivers and swamp. But once you get clear of it, it's pretty decent land ridge here with just forested areas and some clear terrain with no rivers to cross on the approach. The back door to Moscow. We could tackle Moscow from multiple angles. And I don't think the Soviets will be able to build up enough if we apply the combined combat power of the north and center attack group, attack groups, and then we have a long descent defensive front here with some Panzer Corps in the south conducting some smaller operations against the Soviets to, to keep them on their heels, keep them honest. That could be the next stages for 1943. But I believe we're ready for next turn. One quick thing I wanted to point out is, for reinforcements, we thankfully have an 8th Army headquarters. Army headquarters, that's going to be great. We don't want to overburden our Army headquarters. A lot of Corps have been assigned to the Army Group Center Army headquarters, so we're going to place the 18th up in here, right into this region, and assign it to Army Group Center. Let's do next turn. All right, back from getting bombed relentlessly. Losses, only 12,000. I won't say only. Well under 20 Soviets, I think, attacked twice during their turn. Their losses are negligible. What do we have for weather? I think it's clear across all three zones. That's wonderful. Let's check out what's going on. We'll start with Army Group North. Doesn't look like anything happened along this part of the front. We only have a few gaps in our lines from Leningrad really down to Smolensk. Soviets are fronting our bridgehead, but not with any sizable force. Same can be said here. Again, we don't didn't do aerial recon yet. We can do that in a little bit. Moving down, no change here, no change here. What do they do in the pockets? All right, first off, Ryazan. All right, they did not like this at all. I don't know where these forces came from. There was no one to be found. They must have been up here, some operational reserves, or they came across the Oka. But we are now blocked. However, we do have a bridgehead, which we will reinforce as rapidly as possible. Surprisingly, the Soviets kept their defensive line here. Let's do an aerial recon real quick. See what they have for reserves. Let's go back. To kind of thin. Kind of thin. Interesting. They're protecting Ryazan and and also f from German forces getting too far to the north, and now going west and east as well behind them, and they seem to have a fairly contiguous front through here. Soviets are not, they did not get any 
uh, route to their encircled friends. They are not going to be in supply this turn. They're trying to squeak out here. Anything happening against our Hungarians? Nope. Nothing here. Sneaking a mechanized core in for no reason whatsoever. Trying to hopefully link up and free their comrades in the southern encirclement. Yeah, it looks like they're breaking contact a little bit here. Or, or not breaking contact, they're not coming fully adjacent to the outer perimeter, the very thin outer perimeter. That is all right with us, and no change here. What are they doing? I did not... I admit I turned away during the bombs, but I don't remember <laughs> this happening. All right, how do they get through? How do they get through? Interesting. Are we cut off? Oh my god, we are. <laughs> the Soviets encircled us. All right, we're going to have to do something about this. <laughs> Hurrah for the Soviets. They actually encircled German forces. <laughs> All right, that's interesting. Very well. I didn't see what happened. We did they? They must have made one of our. Well, we can see. That's dumb. But no, there's no attack here. We did not have a gap here, did we? How did we? I'm I'm perplexed. I really am. What happened here? Anyway, we'll figure it out. All right, so Soviets up here in this region. They're strung out a little bit. A little condensed. And it will, this turn, like I said, for this episode will be a quick one. We'll just do a lot of pocket cleanup here into the south. And we have to relieve Rostov. Rostov is really encircled. It, that is Soviet zone of control. Well, it's contested. But still, we can't trace supply through there. All right. All right. <laughs> did they try to sneak out west here? No, they didn't. Just here. Oh, they're sneaking through here. That's all right. And no other leaks. Yeah, right here. Okay. Pock up cleanup. More moving our for forces back to the front as we destroy the Soviets in these encirclements. All right. I'll be back with moves and attacks complete. All right. I am back. Moves and attacks complete. Let's get a sit rep. No change along the Leningrad front all the way down to where we started to make some attacks again in the Ryzev area. Pushed back to Soviets fairly successfully here. Didn't have the movement factors in, to occupy the hexes that we forced the Soviets to withdraw from. Here, though, the Soviets did not budge. We tried to attack a couple of times, and they held strong. However, we did start the beginnings of our troop buildup in this sector here. A lot more combat power available for the next turn. So we should be able to push these Soviets out. And we look bordering this attempt at a rupture in the Soviets' line. Our very strong Soviet defensive positions. I believe these are all probably... No, they're not Fort Level 3. Well, that one is. And that's a 2. Very strong we're going to continue to accumulate forces here over the next week or two in an attempt to break out towards Kalinin and get a menacing group of Panzer Corps and Infantry Corps to the north of Moscow. No change along the Moscow, <clears throat> the immediate Moscow front. In tandem with a breakout here and having the development of a pincer to the north. Let's look what we were able to achieve. Let me scroll over here. Sorry, two monitors sometimes makes it a little jerky. All right, look at this. I am absolutely delighted how we were able to dramatically increase <laughs> our bridgehead over the Oka River. If you remember, we only had two Panzer Divisions there. We are able to... Both Panzer Divisions that were in place 
I was, believe it was the second. They didn't go very far. They exhausted all their combat power to push the immediate Soviet formations away, allowing for German forces to pour over the bridgehead in great quantity, with great violence, pushing the Soviets back. Granted, there weren't many Soviet formations other than the immediate ones that were adjacent to the bridgehead. Now we have a very threatening bridgehead. I won't even call this a bridgehead anymore. A very threatening presence to the south and east of Moscow. Look at that. We have movement factors available. Look at that. We could get even closer. I am a little reluctant. I may regret that. I don't want to get greedy. I want to have a controlled, violent, violently controlled advance, axis of advance in this direction. What will the Soviets do in reaction to this? I'm very curious. Will they give up? this front here and retreat over to the Oka. And by doing so, will really shorten their own front and be able to defend in greater depth. They're going to have to do it in the face of a lot of German pressure as they start to withdraw. It won't be in the best order. However, we should be able to capitalize on some opportunities as they start to withdraw. Very happy about this. Very happy indeed. With this force that we're going to build up and pour more and more troops into this sector right now, and then with this buildup we're planning in the next couple of weeks, we will have two strong German concentrations to the north and south of Moscow. How will the Soviets be able to defend this? I don't know. I think we have them a little off balance right now. If we go a little further south scroll over here we once again did a lot of reassignment of divisions to core headquarters so now all our all our core all our infantry corps that are holding the perimeter and reducing the pockets are in good command and control and we have it's cleaned up greatly cleaned up greatly and we're down to 233 where we are sitting at 500 almost for I don't know how many months in a row. That's good though. It, we got it out of the way. It's so messy with these large encirclements and then the pocket cleanup to have good order with our core headquarters and our divisions that are assigned to them to keep everyone in good good command and control and supply. All right, further south, what is happening? We blocked this encroaching mechanized core which we'll destroy in the next turn. And we destroyed as many Soviets as we could in the southern pocket. But they wisely, and I don't know if they planned it this way, to make it even more difficult for the Germans, they came up into the bend of the Don here, taking advantage of the Chernakia Kalitz River, and the Don, away from really the greater part of our combat power that would destroy these Soviets. And now it's just the Romanians that are in position to attack. So it's going to take another week, maybe even two, to destroy these Soviets. And talking about the northern pocket here, these Soviets held out. Very dogged defense. Fort level two, three cores in each. Not easy to destroy. And we exhausted a lot of combat power, destroying the rest of the Soviets that were in this pocket. Next turn, we will destroy these Soviets, and hopefully most of most of the Soviets that are in here. As we did to the north, we did a lot of reassignment of divisions to core headquarters. It is nice and clean now. All the way down to Rostov, and we took care of the minor scare of this Soviet breach in our lines. I don't know how they did it. Did we pull out an infantry division and allow for a gap in the line? I don't know how the Soviets were able to do that. What happened is we attacked a few places. We first we forced the 24th Tank Corps to route. 
And then we pushed back the 94th Rifle Division to retreat, and then we tried to destroy it, but it held its ground. I think we're in pretty decent shape. Soviets have two mechanized and tank corps here to attack again, but I don't know if they have the... After they attack, if it's deliberate to push through zone of control and then push through zone of control again, <laughs> to once again cut off the forces around Rostov. Once this is cleaned up, it's it's a mess still. We did as best as we could to clean this up. We do have nine in total mobile formations, a mixture of Panzer Grenadier, Panzer, and motorized divisions within this region that are part of Army Group South. Where are we going to apply that combat power? I'm not entirely sure right now. But right now, we're still in cleanup mode in the South. And the Romanians, no change. We haven't talked about the Romanians for a little while. Just staring down the Soviets in and around Sevastopol and this little neck of a land bridge here in the Crimea. No change at all. Romanians are getting a, a break at this later stage of the war, and that's okay. They did a great job for the Germans leading up to this. And that is really the sit rep, the biggest and more and most important news is this right here. How will we capitalize on this? Soviets are going to have to pull forces from somewhere. And again, they have a cloning device, a cloning factory to spit out divisions and corps from out of nowhere and arrive at the scene. We'll see how they manage to block the German penetration here. They can't do that everywhere and now we have a great buildup of combat power combining the center and the northern groupings that were part of those encirclements the past couple of weeks we have moved down also 21st 24th panzer corps onto the rails one straggler division is up here they're on access rails and i believe we're going to it least move one or two maybe three to the north although we don't have 50 56 is already kind of strapped out we may pawn off a couple of their the infantry divisions assigned to 56 so that it frees up some command and control capacity and we'll rail up another pair of panzer divisions to make the 56 very strong just continuing to build up and that's about it that is the sit rep pretty good more pocket cleanup in the next week and exploit exploit this breakout further all right we are ready for next turn all eyes will be on our bridgehead over the Oka River If there's nothing really to show for the Soviet's turn, I will cut to the chase and we'll get to the Germans' losses. All right, Soviet's turn is completed. There was really nothing to report during their turn. Losses, again, down the 12, 13,000, 10,000 during their turns lately. Their losses, not much to speak of there, as they didn't do any attacks. Let's get to the weather there is always a chance for mud to creep in at any point during the summer during on the random weather chart, but thankfully it's all clear. Let's quickly go over to the really... Oh, dear Lord. <laughs> Where did they come from? Oh, wow. Yeah, there was no Soviets whatsoever to see... After aerial recon, more than likely they came from this area where the Soviets have the operational reserves always sitting in and around Moscow to shuffle into the front. And that's clearly where they came from, my guess. What is very important is that we managed to go further north. We managed to get 
north of the swamps. And what I mean by that is, if you look here, this swampy region and this swamp, we now are fighting the Soviets in light forest rather than swamps, and that's far better for our Panzer divisions and our mobile divisions to fight in light woods than swamp conditions. And we have an unhindered route to push as many as our infantry divisions north as possible. If they're doing this, they can't use these troops to block our forces here, although they seem to have really <laughs> committed to the point of attack for this axis of advance. Interesting, interesting. The Soviets, once again, are doing everything within their power to block progress towards Moscow. We are not going to relent, and they have far less forces than they used to have and we are not going to relent on this mission. All right, down further south. No Soviets escaped out of the northern pocket. This mechanized corps didn't go anywhere, and the Soviets didn't really escape anywhere out of this pocket. And is Rostov secure? Yes, Rostov is secure. We'll clean this up further, and once this is, these Soviets are destroyed, we'll shuffle down some forces and make the Rostov front a little stronger and cut off this damnable swamp hex. So there's no more shenanigans Soviets leaking through here. All right, that is the results of the Soviets' turn. Not much changed except the rapid and rather robust response to get Soviet, to get their formations in front of our lead Panzer divisions and Panzer Grenadier divisions. Is it enough to stop the German forces on their approach to Moscow? You know what? You know what? Hmm. Rather than continue to push towards Moscow, maybe surprise the Soviets and cut off this concentration to Soviet forces. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. We will have options to do that. Should the Soviets not pull out? I imagine if we get about to this point and they really feel the pressure in their rear area, then they're going to pull out and concede Ryazan. No change to the north either, I imagine. Yep. All right. Thank you for watching. This is First Fire, Non-Assault Move Out.